Salih السلام, came to these people, told them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told them to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon them. And so one day what they said to Salih السلام, they said, you see this mountain, we want you to carve a camel out of the mountain, a live camel. If I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He blesses you with this sign, will you believe? Will you believe? And they promised and they said, yes, bring it. The condition was that the camel was not to be harmed in any way. And so again and again throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this camel Naqatullah, the camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sign. They were the most ignorant of creation. When they started killing Naqatullah, they first cut off the tendons on the legs, they cut off the tendons. Once they started in the cutting and the spearing and the arrowing of the camel, the sh of this camel, Naqatullah, it cried out. It cried out. And the whole land was shaking from her cry. She was crying for her child. And the story continues. Tonight inshallah ta'ala we are going to be speaking about the people of Thamud of whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his slave Salih alayhi salam. The people of Thamud, they were Arabs and they lived actually near to Tabuk. If you're familiar with like the Hijaz area, you have Medina. North from Medina is a seven hours north by car is Tabuk. And in that area is in the area where Thamud used to live. And that area till today is called and known as Madain Salih, meaning the dwellings of Salih. And so these people of Thamud, what they used to do is they used to carve homes out of the mountains. And we spoke about the people uh, of Petra, Al Batra, which is in Jordan. And we said that Thamud was actually an offshoot of those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَنْحِتُونَ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا آمِنِينَ He said, and you carve from the mountains, بُيُوتًا homes, آمِنِينَ full of safety. Now when you think about it, right, when you build a house, you build a house of wood, it can burn down, you build a house of, you know, you name all these different things. How can you destroy a mountain? How can you destroy a mountain? And so the people of Thamud, their skill was that they would build homes into the mountain, right? And it's just not just a cave, it's not a cave. It's an actual like castle that's built into the mountains. And what did the people of Thamud do wrong? Step number one, they worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what they did is they, they attributed all these gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to their idols. Were they intelligent? In the dunya sense, they were intelligent, right? They had their fancy degrees and their PhDs in this and carving in mountains. They're obviously extremely successful in their intelligence and their skill. But when it came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were the most ignorant of creation. Salih السلام, came to these people, told them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told them to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon them because what they have is not from their own hands. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it, as they say, it behooves the person to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gift before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it away from them. And so Salih alayhi salam would call them to Allah azza wa jalla and argue with them and debate with them. And so they became fed up. And so one day what they said to Salih alayhi salam, they said, you see this mountain, we want you to carve a camel out of the mountain a live camel. We want you to carve a she camel out of the mountain that is alive and is pregnant. And it's huge by they, they described it has to be a camel like this, a camel like this, a camel like this, a camel like this. And so Salih salam said, if this, if, Allah, if I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He blesses you with this sign, will you believe? Will you believe? And they promised and they said, yes, bring it. And so Salih alayhi salam, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asked Allah azza wa to show them the sign. And so carved from the mountain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
brought forth a she-camel, Naqatullah. The she-camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say something like, Baytullah, the house of Allah, what are we talking about? The Kaaba. When you say, Kitabullah, the book of Allah, what are we talking about? The Quran. And so again and again throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this camel, Naqatullah. The camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sign that Salih alayhi salam was given to show to the people. And so some of the people believed in Salih. The Quran does mention that there were people from the people of Thamud who do, did believe in Salih alayhi salam. But the majority of them, they disbelieved in Salih even though the camel had been brought. And so the condition was that the camel was not to be harmed in any way. That this is Naqatullah and that they should not harm the camel. And that the camel would drink one day from the water and they would drink the other day. This is such an enormous camel and such a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would drink the water of an in, the entire people of Thamud. And it had its whole day for drinking. And the day when they weren't drinking from the water, they were actually drinking from the milk of this camel. Enough milk to give to the entire tribe of Thamud. And how many people are we speaking about? This is the tribe of Thamud and this is Naqatullah. It was pregnant. The camel, it's a she camel and it was pregnant and it gave birth to its, as they say, fasil. It gave birth to its baby she camel. And the story continues. When the camel, the she camel was brought to them, Naqatullah. When they saw the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they disbelieved in the sign. When Salih salam brought to them the message, they said in response, "Qad kunta fina marjuwan." Marju is like desired, meaning that Salih salam was very wise, was very strong, was very handsome. He's from um, from their uh, from the, their people, Akhum Salih, right? Their brother Salih, and they had high hopes for Salih salam. Meaning that he would have got a very high government position. He would be working for the government, lots of benefits, permanent job, all of that. He would have got a really good status. And they were saying, what a pity that you had to say this. Because, you know, you had a great career. Why did you have to say this? Because now everybody's going to say that you're crazy. How many people actually killed the camel? Killed Naqatullah. How many people killed the camel? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ There was nine. تِسْعَةُ رَهْدٍ There was nine people. يُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ They were doing fasad in the ard. وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ And actually not only that, and, and this is something just so you understand, is that when these people are not able, when the du'at of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the servants of Allah, when they are strong and they carry the message of Allah clearly, verbally they've announced it and they've told the people, worship Allah, you have no Lord but Him. Then you will find the kuffar. In the beginning they have misconceptions, doubts, and so on and so forth. What happens when they lose the argument? They resort to something else. They resort to terror. They resort to violence. The kuffar. They turn to expelling. They want to expel him from the land. They turn to detainment. They turn to killing the prophets. Correct? And so not only did they kill Naqatullah, but a lot of people don't realize that after they killed Naqatullah, they attempted the next nights to kill Salih alayhi salam. Qalu billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they said, they promised that we will kill him in the night. And they're not only killing Salih alayhi salam, they're going to kill his whole family. And so again, you understand that these people, they don't stop at the da'i to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will proceed to harm the family of the person who's calling to Allah azza wa jalla. They will proceed to that. And this was their intention. And of course, Salih alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him before they could fulfill this. How many people were they? We said nine. When the nine people came to kill the she camel, came to kill Naqatullah, they, the nine of them, there was only one of them who had the, I would say the audacity to step forward and begin the killing of Naqatullah.
So not only out of the whole tribe of Thamud, there were nine people who did the, the killing. And from these nine people, even only one of them stepped forward and did the killing. The name of that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentions him in the Quran, in the Quran, إِذِمْ بَعَثَ أَشْقَاهَا The worst of them. The worst of all Thamud. You're talking about one of the worst human beings to ever live. His name was Qidar ibn Salif. Qidar ibn Salif was Ashqaha, the worst of Thamud who went forward and killed uh, and, and began the killing of Naqatullah. These nine people, they did this. One of them actually, Qidar ibn Salif was the one who started it and then they killed it. When they started killing the camel, when they started killing Naqatullah, they first cut off the tendons on the legs, they cut off the tendons. Once they started in the cutting and the spearing and the arrowing of the camel, the sh uh, this camel, Naqatullah, it cried out. It cried out. And the whole land was shaking from her cry. She was crying for her child, to warn her child of what they were doing. And as the books of Tariq and Tafsir, they'll say that this Fasil, the baby camel, the, um, the child of the Naqatullah, it climbed up and ran away as they slaughtered the camel. And it climbed up to the top of the mountain and it cried out itself for the killing of its mother. It cried out three times. Now Salih alayhi salam made a promise with the people of Thamud. He said that Allah is bringing the sign and do not touch it with any harm. And in the verses that a, a painful, an enormous, huge punishment will come upon you. The camel, the child of the, of the Naqatullah, it was on the top of the mountain and called out three times. Salih alayhi salam said to his people تَمَتَّعُوا فِي دَارِكُمْ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامٍ he said, enjoy yourselves in your places, in your dwellings, three days. That this is a promise that has no lie in it. And Salih السلام, the people who believed in Salih, they left. They were going to kill them, as we said, when they couldn't argue anymore and they're stuck, there's nothing to say, they resort to violence and terror and they attempted to kill Salih السلام, and his family and the believers, those who believed in Salih السلام, they left from the uh, tribe of, of Thamud and now they had three days. And so they started partying and they were mocking and ridiculing. And so on the first day, their faces became yellow. On the second day, their faces, and, and actually they would dress up and they would say, oh, the first day has passed. And then, and they're like, oh, no punishment has come. Second day, their faces became red. And they said, oh, the punishment is coming. It's day two, day two, ha, 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 ha. And then day three came and their faces turned black. And they said, it's day three, where's the punishment of Allah? Where's the punishment? And they're laughing and they're mocking. So much so that they, they went to an exaggeration in their mocking that they started wearing their kafan. They put on their, their, um, their uh, shrouds and they put the hanut, it's like, you know, what would you put on a dead body? In mockery. Like, it was like a party, like Halloween or something like this. That they're dressing up like the dead. And they said, it's the third day. And then at that third day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down His punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Thamud and Ad, they disbelieve and they claim that it was a lie. When you say disbelieve, they're saying that the Qari'a, the day of judgment, the horrible, when this, this shaking, the quake that's going to lead to the day of resurrection, they disbelieved in it. Meaning they said that it was a lie. It's not happening. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ they were destroyed, annihilated by Taghiya. This is actually interesting. Taghiya and Qari'a. And now because Thamud disbelieved in the Qari'a, they said it was a lie, it's not happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them with a Taghiya. And the translation is actually interesting. It says storm and lightning and so on and so forth. But that's not necessarily what a Taghiya says. Some of the scholars actually in fact have mentioned 
And this is something that you realize later because at that time you couldn't understand what it is. The power of sound waves. The power of sound waves. And its ability to destroy. <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when the taqiyah happened, they were destroyed. And you talk a destruction that happens like instantaneously. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. When they started killing the camel, Naqatullah, what do you think the other people of Thamud started doing? Did they say, no, don't kill the camel? They didn't do that. What did they do instead? They started cheering. They became cheerleaders for the killing of the camel. Not all of them actually physically killed the camel. Nine of them gathered together out of the whole tribe of Thamud and only one of them started the killing of the camel. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed all of Thamud. Why? Someone could say, I didn't kill the camel. It wasn't my fault. What was the sin of all of Thamud? They all disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what their punishment is coming from is that when the kufr happened, the disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, this breaking of the covenant with Allah Azza wa Jal, they were not against it. You can say that they were either silent observers or in their heart, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with it in their hearts. That if they see the haram happening, it's no big deal. And this is something extremely dangerous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And as for Thamud, فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ So we guided them. Was Thamud guided? And the answer is yes, because Salih was sent to them and told them the message. وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ فَاسْتَحَبُّ الْعَمَا عَلَى الْهُدَى And so they loved and preferred blindness over guidance. They closed their eyes, they closed their hearts, they closed their ears, everything is shut down, all the faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them, they close it. All right, what would have saved Thamud? What would have saved Thamud as a lesson for all of us? What would save us? We said, Worship Allah Azza wa Jal. So the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as uh, the pillars of Islam, the commandments of Allah staying away for the forbidden will protect you and save you. Secondly is istighfar, is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. As Salih alayhi salam uh, said to his people, لِمَا تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ uh, he said, if only you asked Allah forgiveness so that you would receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if a person does that, if they seek the forgiveness of Allah azza wa jal, they're worshiping Allah and when they disobey Allah, they ask for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would show them His mercy. And the last but not least is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His blessings. This is your Savior and protection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.